More than ever before, the human race seems willing to surrender spiritually and emotionally to a charismatic leader who can offer peace and prosperity to a world trembling on the brink of ecological and social collapse, international financial chaos, and a nuclear holocaust. Well-known New Ager Benjamin Krem claims to be the coming world leader's advanced public relations man. In 1982, full-page advertisements around the world announced the coming of Krem's New Age Christ, which gave fresh hope to millions. At this press conference in Los Angeles, he described how this Christ would make himself known. It is a truism today to say that we are at the dawn of a new age, the age of Aquarius. And it is important to remember that all of the great religions await the coming of a teacher. The Christians await the return of the Christ. The Muslims await the Imam Mahdi. At the same time, the Buddhists await the coming of another Buddha. The Hindus await the return of Krishna, and the Jews, as always, await the coming of the Messiah. I am speaking today about the return of such a teacher. Christians are awaiting the return of the resurrected Jesus with the nail prints in his hands and feet. But the followers of the Gurus are awaiting a coming world ruler who won't even claim to be Jesus, but the latest reincarnation of the Christ Spirit, and he will have the psychic powers to prove it. Simultaneously, throughout the world will take place hundreds of thousands of spontaneous healings and cures, which will reinforce, if that were even necessary, the fact that it is the Christ himself. The Day of Declaration will be the outstanding event of this or any other century. On that day, the radio and the television networks of the world will be linked together. We shall see this extraordinary face on our television screens. But he will not speak. His words will drop silently into our minds in our own language. This is the significance of the altered state of consciousness reached in yoga and other forms of Eastern meditation. A Nobel Prize winner has described the brain as, quote, a machine that a ghost can operate, unquote. What that means is, in an altered state of consciousness, the connection between my spirit that normally operates my brain and my brain is loosened, and that allows another spirit being to interpose itself, begin to tick off the neurons in the brain, create an entire universe of illusion, astral travel, give psychic powers. In this way, the world is being prepared for some ultimate delusion. He will indeed inaugurate a great new world religion, and at the very most sacred core, of that new world religion will be the process which is called the esoteric initiations which take us out of the strictly human kingdom into the kingdom of God. David Spangler, board member of the Planetary Initiative for the World We Choose, which comes out of the United Nations, declares that Lucifer is the same force as Christ, that Lucifer prepares us for our own Christhood that this is the final Luciferic initiation into the New Age. Benjamin Krems Christ may not be the world teacher and ruler of world peace as he forecasted, but without question the stage is being set today for what the Bible calls the apostasy or man's abandonment of God. This climate is ushering in the final actor, the counterfeit, who the Bible predicts must come before the return of Jesus the true Prince of Peace, who will then reign for a thousand years. The merger of science and mysticism is now in full blossom, and its evil fruit will be the new universal religion of the coming world dictator that the Bible identifies as the Antichrist. The consequence of Hindu religion in the form of Guruism in our part of the world will be extraordinary. Everything will be changed, not just our religiosity, but also our concept of man, our democracy, our tradition of humanitarianism and caring for one another, our social systems. All that will become meaningless because it's all based on the Christian presuppositions which will then eventually be lost. 
will get a man-centered, individualistic, egocentric sort of religiosity, where salvation means escape from the world, everything which binds us to other human beings, everything which makes us caring and loving creatures. Today's revival of paganism and Hindu practices, which form the heart of the New Age movement, was ironically the same kind of foundation that prepared the way for Hitler's rise to power. The Germany of the 20s and 30s was in social and economic despair and looked for a leader who would free them from the Great Depression. The man with a promise of hope was Adolf Hitler who claimed he was ordained of God to usher in 1,000 years of peace and prosperity. His hypnotic powers manipulated an entire nation to surrender its collective mind to him. Obsessed with the occult, Hitler drew many of his bizarre ideas from Hinduism. Within Guruism, it's therefore not surprising that we find very positive sentences, very positive stances in relation to Nazism. A number of the gurus have praised Hitler for what he has done, included his killing of six million Jews. He took the symbol of the swastika as his own a Hindu symbol of power seen in many of today's temples in India. Millions of Germans who submitted to Hitler as though he were God died for him and his cause, much like the followers of Jim Jones. The current worldwide revival of Hinduism blended with psychology and disguised as self-improvement, self-hypnosis, positive mental attitude seminars, visualization techniques, and mind dynamics courses has made today's world far more susceptible to spiritual deception than the Germany that embraced Adolf Hitler. <laughs> Today, a desperate world is looking for another spiritual leader. Has the human race learned nothing from its own mistakes? Jesus says, see to it that no one misleads you, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, behold here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe them, for false Christs and false prophets will arise and will show great signs and wonders so as to mislead, if possible, even the elect. Let no one deceive you, the apostasy comes first. Then the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction who takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me.